Hello everyone, it's been a while, but uh, today I have a guide on the five hero augments of TFT set 11. Similar to my recent hiatus due to IRL stuff, uh, hero augments have been on hiatus from set 10 because of the headliner mechanic, but they're back for set 11. There's five of them, and all five of them are very strong if you know how to play them. I spent a lot of time fine-tuning what I think is the true best board for each of these augments. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, confusion with some of them. And I think a lot of the ways that some of them are being played isn't really the best way to do it. So I'm just going to get right into this. And as you guys will be noticing, all the information I'm going to be referencing is included in this PowerPoint, which I made. This will be included in the description of the video. This PowerPoint isn't too dissimilar from any other comp list you can find anywhere else. But there's a lot of experimental comps in hidden tech. I might find its place here before you see it anywhere else. The moment something new is found, it will be added here. So if you want a first look at any new strategies, be sure to like the video. Nico's hero augment is Drop Blossom. Essentially, her spell heals more and does more damage, and after each cast, the range increases by one. Drop Blossom is probably one of the more interesting ones because of the manner in which it infinitely scales and because of Nico's three traits. I'm personally a believer in Arcanist just because it gives Nico the most healing, the most damage. You can buff her defenses with items, and I think this setup makes her the more oppressive threat than within a mythic setup or a heavenly setup. Because of the manner in which the traits fit, it's probably best to spend most of your time on 7 instead of on 6. I think Nico 3 is very important, but you won't likely be able to fit 6 Arcanist on 6. Generally, it's hard to find the Syndra on 6, and having a Moom is pretty good for your front line. So, but being level 7 allows you to fit uh, 6 Arcanist to Warden. For items, I think the best setup is just double Gargoyle's BT. You want to position Nico's solo frontline so that the enemy frontline wraps around her. Uh, the double goggles will ensure that she lives and she casts. She'll heal to full pretty much every time. This is kind of like Demon Flare Swain from set 9. In that it just is too much to bear for most teams. And uh, eventually her cast is just going to hit the whole board. And uh, the damage will scale that way. Shen's hero augment is Ethereal Blades. Your strongest Shen gains 3 range and his spell does increase damage. With Ethereal Blades, uh, you want to be running 6 Behemoth and 2 Sage. You're going to be rolling on 6 for Shen 3, so in the meantime you're probably going to be running either 4 Behemoth plus Flex. Or if you somehow high roll the Orn early, you can just run 6 Behemoth from the get-go. Uh, traditionally, you want to be going Titans and Gintsus on Shen. Titans give Shen 40 armor when it's fully stacked, which is pretty impactful for his ability, and then Ginsu's helps him cast faster. Uh, because his ability is auto attack based, uh, I think Ginsu's is better than Shojin because you will use your three autos faster and then start moving on to your next cast faster. As for your secondary carry, it's most likely going to be Morgana. Morgana and Wukong fit into the comp really well because they provide both Ghostly, Sage, and Heavenly. Uh, Morgana just gets standard AP items, whatever you have. Uh, your other like bruiser items, like whatever leftover items will go on to Wukong or Udyr. Uh tank items go on Orn. The frontline Ethereal Blade stack is to just triple gargoyles him for more armor than you would have otherwise. Uh he does uh, considerably more damage. Uh he targets backline faster. It's he's too vulnerable to solo frontline. Like, sometimes I would win lobbies, but sometimes he would just get cocked by Set and Lissandra. So, I think it's just safer to frontline him, but put him on one of the sides. He'll take the aggro of, like, one side of the enemy board, but not the whole thing. And a lot of the time, he's going to be dodging Set and Lissandra, because you can move him to the opposite of where they are. Yorick's hero augment is Midnight Siphon. Your strongest Yorick will gain increased max health, and his ability will deal damage scaling with his max health. Midnight Typhoon was a menace in the PPE. It's been nerfed, but it's still quite strong. For the most part, you want to go for a vertical behemoth setup, but uh, if you can get away with rerolling Yone and the Loon, because it's not contested, I think that's probably the better strategy. Yone isn't reliant on Reaper, despite what people think. Like, his... Actual cast doesn't do a lot, so it doesn't really matter for crits. Your 3 isn't a high priority, 
in that you don't need to sit at six to roll for it. It's better to go seven. You can have four Umble, four Behemoth, and you have a better chance rolling for Yone and Loon, which are very good carries apart from your York. Obviously, you're going to prioritize your items because his augment makes him stronger than both of them. But if you can get all three online, you're probably going first. The items you want on Yorick are just stall items. Items like Dragon Claw, BT, Steadfast Heart, I personally like just because they scale with his health and his damage. That scales with health. Uh, he's just a lot of frontline and a lot of damage. And he's buying time for your Yone, your Alune to pump out damage you don't need to go more damage on him because he's naturally going to get it from his natural scaling so you just want him to last as long as possible if yone and Alun aren't contested you could just go a traditional six behemoth setup make your incredibly tanky have a flex backline kabuko's hero augment is lucky pause you get a free two star kabuko and his ability does a lot more damage if kabuko kills a unit he'll drop one gold Lucky Boss is probably one of the more misunderstood augments, just because people don't really understand how Kabuko works. Kabuko's abilities damage skills with health. So I've been seeing a lot of bruiser Kabukos with Titans and BT, but all that does is improve his healing. He gets a little bit of defense from Titans, but it's probably better to just build tank items on him. If you want tankiness, Dragon's Claw and Bramble Blast are probably mandatory. And then Redemption is probably a solid third item. You can also go Sethfast Heart. If you have a good Ink Shadow item, which I'll talk about later, uh, that's also another option. Because Lucky Paws grants you a free 2-star Kabuko, you only need to look for 6 naturally. So it's pretty easy to just hyper roll for him on 3-1 and then use the gold that he generates from his ability, like from his passive with the augment, to push levels and just go fast 9, fast 10. The board you want to look for ideally is Vertical Bruiser, as that buffs Kabuko's damage and survivability. Uh, it's the only trait that has synergy with him, so you might as well look into that. If you can fit 6 Bruiser at 6, you should do that. But otherwise, just 4 Bruiser plus item holders for your eventual backline. In the late game, you want to look for some package of like legendaries to cap out your board. I have 3 here as shown. You have the Lee Sin, Rakan, Irelia package, which connects with Riven and Galio for Ultra Story Weaver, and then you have Dragon Lord with Lucian Rakan. Another package is the Morgana Wukong Soraka package, which gives you Heavenly Sage and Ghostly. And the last one is the Azir Lily of Way package, which is Invoker Mythic Dryad. You typically want to push for a 9 and then include one of these packages. If you can go to 10, you can drop down to 4 Bruiser, by the time you, you've reached that point, Kobuko probably has enough health that you can afford to give him a little bit less health and then just include a second package and just keep the bruisers that connect the synergies. Item holders I like are either Caitlyn Cogmall backline or the Teemo Sivir backline. Uh, Teemo holds AP items, Sivir holds AD items, Cogmall holds AP items, Caitlyn holds AD items, and you just put them on whatever AD unit is in the package. I mean, the... Azir Lily of White package doesn't have any AD users, but you just have to take that into consideration. If you get a favorable Ink Shadow, you can use that as a viable third item. Uh, the ones I like are Tattoo of Forest and Tattoo of Vitality. Tattoo of Forest is really good for Kabuko because he, one, gets resistances, which he doesn't get from his traits. And two, it helps him set up kills because after he casts, he will most likely kill a target and then he'll move on to the next one. He'll get a pretty much guaranteed stun. And then a little bit of bonus damage that'll help him secure the next kill. Tattoo of Vitality is good just because he has a lot of health. Like, it, it's, it just is a good scaling item. Apart from those two, I wouldn't consider including Ink Shadow. Garen's hero augment is Story Champion. You get 2 star Garen for free, and instead of shielding himself, he, his ability gives him max health. His ability also does bonus true damage if he has more max health than his target, similar to Tom Kench. Storied Hero is similar to Lucky Balls in that you get a free 2-star Garen, so you realistically are just going to be pushing for Garen 3 and then pushing levels. In this one, you have a little bit more synergy with the backline with Star Weaver, so you can... It's more inclined to have a Teemo Sivir backline. You don't have to 3-star them. Uh, if, you're, if you hit them for free, like, you might as well. 
But uh, if not, you could just keep them to the start and use them as item holders for a more capped out board. While you're pushing levels, you just include more wardens. That makes Garen more tanky. Uh, it helps snowball a bit better than having other stuff, especially if you have good items on your backline anyway. Like Teemo 2 and Saber 2 are good enough to carry you through stage 3, stage 4. Realistically, because you're spending less time rerolling, you can cap out your board a lot easier than with the 2-star hero augments. You don't get as much tempo as with Lucky Paws because you're not getting gold and Kabuko has a better time killing units. It still is good enough. And then the capped out board, you have a little bit less flexibility because of you have more synergies with specific traits. But you can still have a pretty capped out board with the uh, Irelia, Wukong, Wukong set. And as you can see, the items I had for Saber and Teemo uh, can very easily translate to Irelia with the Saber items and then to Wukong and to Wukong with the Teemo items. As for items, I'm a big fan of Titans. It just gives everything he needs. He'll have time to scale. Uh, it gives him the damage he needs. It gives him some defenses. It boosts the amount of health he gets on his ability cast. I would say having two of them is probably best in slot. Uh, as for your third item, uh, my options would probably be either Bloodthirster or Dragonclaw. Bloodthirster is just a good healing item that suits the uh, like bruiser units. And Dragonclaw is a tank item, but I'm a big fan of it in setups involving really high health, such as Bruisers or Dryad, or in this case, infinitely stacking max health. Anyway, that's all I have for today. I have a couple more videos planned to be released soon for TFT and for League of Legends. And I have a very special project that I've been working on for quite some time that hopefully I can release soon. Until then, take care, everyone.